Hi everybody, welcome to Tips for Sociology. Today, a little bit of an unusual video. I'm gonna be counting down my top five tips that I would recommend to anybody starting out on an A-level sociology course. Hopefully, given the fact that I've been teaching A-level sociology for almost 10 years now, I'll be able to give you some pearls of wisdom and set you up with some important study skills and important advice that will get you to maximize your attainment when taking this subject. Okay, tip number one is attendance. Now, I'm sure you've probably heard that before because all of your teachers and all of your colleges are gonna be waxing lyrical about how important it is to be in college and be there attending all of your classes. But evidence will back up what they are saying. Um, statistics will show that you coming in with 95% attendance for your whole A-level course versus a version of you with the same GCSE grades coming in on 85% attendance, the difference is around two grades across a three A-level program. That means that somebody who might get three Bs ends up with BCC. And then if the attendance gets worse and it goes to 5% and another 10% and it's 75%, it really, really starts to drop off. So making sure you get to all your classes is absolutely essential. I know that's difficult as well because a lot of you are balancing things outside of college. You might have part-time jobs, you've got friends, you've got hobbies, but for the 15 hours or so of lessons that you get across a 3A level program, it is fundamental that you get yourself in. Even if you're feeling a little bit under the weather, try to get in for that two and a half hour lesson or that hour lesson there because that will maximize the amount that you put in um, and that will certainly mean that you get out more. Another really basic one for tip number two is get yourself organized. The importance of making sure you have all of your handouts, all of your work that you've completed throughout the two years, nicely set up in folders so you know where everything is and it's easy to access is super, super critical, okay? If you are spending hours before your exam putting your folder in order before you've even started revising is a total waste of time. So a little bit of time at the end of each lesson, at the end of each week, just making sure your folders are in order, everything is in there that needs to be, any notes that you've consolidated go in the right section, all your essays stick together so you've got a point of reference for all of them. That is very, very important. I can't, I can't really express how important it is to make sure you are an organised student. Okay, so tip one and tip two sounded quite basic and broad and really relate to any A-level or any kind of subject or course that you're taking in general, attend and be organised. However, tip three, I think is critical for sociology and probably quite easy to do. And that is read around the topic. It's looking at the newspapers. It's reading articles online. It's listening to podcasts and reading books that maybe are not going to give you the answers for the questions that you might need in the exam, but will support those ideas and also will kind of increase your interest in the subject. Sociology, some people click and it's just there straight away and they really, really enjoy it. For those of you who find some of the topics a little bit more dull, well, you're going to have to start to find a way of increasing your motivation. And just spending your time looking in a textbook is probably not going to do that. So find areas of the course that you find interesting and target those. Ask your teacher for additional materials. Ask them what podcast they're listening to. Ask your teacher difficult questions about how they might view things and, and the way that they think about certain arguments. They will be able to direct you to some really interesting stuff. You've got a world of the internet out there just at your fingertips. So make really good use of it and read as much as you can around all of the topics that you're studying. Tip number four is know your exam. Again, this is a broad one and is applicable to all A-levels and any academic subject you study at any level, whether it's GCSE, BTEC, T-level, A-level, whatever it may be. You've got to know your exam, but I really think it's important for subjects like sociology. You're going to go into an exam where you know that questions are going to be certain lengths and you know that you're going to be asked for assessment objectives to tick off and hit marks based off those question lengths. If you were doing WJC or EDUCAS, you might know that there's 40 markers, there's 20 markers, there's 30 markers, there's 35 markers, there's 15. Well, what have you got to do for each of those questions? If you go into the exam and you know what the command words are going to be and you know what assessment objectives you have to hit, it's going to make it really straightforward. If you walk into an exam and you don't know what you're supposed to do, you've not clued up and you've not got strategies in place, it makes everything harder. So making sure you are aware what topics go with each exam, 
how long you get to do it, how long should it take you to answer each question, which have you got to evaluate on, which have you just got to explain, which have you got to use an item with. All of those things are fundamental. So making sure you know that is as important as knowing the basics of sociology overall. Tip number five, you can't write every single essay that could possibly come up in your sociology A level. There isn't enough time, there isn't enough teachers available to mark it, and every now and again, the exam board can throw in something with a slightly different wording that means that you're gonna to have to change those essays. So it's not possible to write every essay, but what it is possible to do is plan for all those eventualities. And then my advice is to pick parts of the essay that are difficult and write yourself some practice paragraphs on those essays. So focusing in on comparison paragraphs and saying, right, well, in a functionalism and crime essay, I will compare functionalism to interactionism. That's a difficult paragraph. What are my comparison points? What would an interactionist say to critique the functionist argument? And now I'm going to write that paragraph. It might mean that you're only writing 10 or 15% of an essay, but you've got the skills that you've developed while you're doing that. And there's an easy, simple and quicker way than writing out essay after essay after essay and just becoming a bit of an essay robot. Um, you're welcome to write out as many as possible and your teachers, I'm sure, will be happy to go through them with you. But I think picking pick practice paragraphs out of essays that you've planned is a useful backup as well. Last but not least, and it's not one of the top five tips, but it's try to have yourself a longer term plan. I know this is really difficult because people ask you all the time now, oh, what do you want to do when you finish college? What do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to do when you've, um, when you've gone to university? Well, there are really difficult questions and you might not feel comfortable and might not know the answer to them. I was in a similar position when I was your age. But what I think you have to do is go with a longer term plan. Some people would tell me that their long term plan is to finish A-levels. I'm like, that's not really that longer term. So is your long term plan to go to university? Even if you don't know what you want to study, you might know where you want to go and you might then have an idea of what grade you might need. OK, well, if you don't know whether it's university, do you want to be living at your parents' house or your guardian's house in five years time? Or do you need to have a job where you might be moving out? Do you need to move to a different part of the country? Are those dreams or ambitions that you have? Do you want to travel the world? Well, thinking about those and placing these A-levels within them is crucial. So try and get yourself long term goals for a lot of you. Yeah, it will be university and it will be a job after that involving the subject that you want to study. But not everybody's that fortunate. So try your best to come up with some. And I would suggest that a way of doing that is widen your experience. And um, most colleges will make you do a work experience placement. But when I was at college, I was starting to do some volunteering. I was working with football teams. I was working on the radio uh, and those things really help develop skills and contacts and networks that I could use later on in life and shaped my kind of ideas of what I wanted to do and where I wanted to be in the future. As always, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share this if you can. It'd be really useful this year if we can break 1000 subscribers. But I know what I'm going to have to do in order for that to happen, which is actually get around to doing some more videos and stop being so lazy. So uh, that's going to be uh, on, my, uh, on my target list for the remainder of this year. Um, remember, if you've got anything you would like me to do a video on, whether it's any more top tips or anything specific to sociological theories or concepts or writers, please put in the comments below uh, and I'll get around to, uh, to looking at it and seeing if I can get a video out there. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.